What's up guys? Today we're gonna to go over how to make a pulse counter, otherwise known as a pulse divider. Um, so we can see here that I have an input pulse on the left side, which is just a pretty simple uh, repeater loop. And then we have the output pulse of the pulse counter on the right, right here, uh, denoted by this lamp. So if I wait for the output to go off, uh, we can see that the input will go once, it'll go twice, and then it'll go three times and the output will go with it. And then we have another one, another two, and then on the third one, it'll go. Um, this is because I have it set to three items in the dropper. You can increase the amount that the pulse is counting by, uh, by increasing the number or decreasing the number of items in this dropper. I have three, but you can easily make it any number you want. Um, there are limitations to this, but I will explain that in the video. All right, I have a five by three area on the ground, and I have an extra block right here, and this is where the output of the pulse counter is going to go. Um, so I'm gonna put a redstone dust on this little block right here. Then in the opposite corner, I'm gonna place an opaque block, and this is where our input signal is gonna come from, which I'm just gonna use a lever. Um, you can also use redstone dust into it uh, if you have something else you want to use, but a lever is easier for me to show. Then we put a dropper facing away from the input pulse block. Then we have a hopper facing into the dropper, which you can hold shift and right click on the dropper to do that. Then we have two comparators facing away from both the dropper and the hopper. Then we have another set of hoppers that face into each other in front of the two comparators. Then we have a comparator facing away from the hopper that is closest to the output. Then we have an opaque block here. We put a redstone torch on this opaque block that faces this direction, uh, closer to this one. And then we have two redstone dust that go and disable this hopper. Um, next, what we do is we place a single item in the set of hoppers up here. And then we place uh, the number of blocks in the dropper uh, that we want the pulse counter to count in pulses. So if I want a three pulse counter, I put three blocks in here. If I want a five pulse counter, I put five, so on and so forth. Um, I'm gonna do three just because it's easy to show. Um, and then this output right here, when it goes off, will be a signal strength of one. Um, so if you want to get it anywhere else, you need to strengthen it with a repeater or something. Um, so just to show that it works, I'm gonna put a lamp on the output so that we can see it. Um, I have three blocks in the dropper. So then what happens is if I do one, nothing happens, two, nothing happens. But if I do three, we can see that the output will turn on and then it'll turn back off. And then I can do one, two, and then three, and it'll turn on and then it'll turn back off. Now, the way this works is you have items in the dropper and you don't have any items in this hopper initially. So what happens is this comparator facing away from the dropper is on, this comparator is off. So the item in this set of hoppers will end up in the one that is uh, away from the dropper in this case. That means that the comparator reading this hopper is off, which means that the output is off, as well as this torch is on, which disables this hopper. Um, and because this hopper is disabled, uh, we can push items into it. Um, and because uh, this hopper gets items in it, this comparator turns on, but because this comparator's uh, disabling this hopper, that doesn't really change anything. Um, the item doesn't move anywhere. Uh, this hopper is disabled, so the items do not move back into the dropper. Um, and essentially, I'm gonna move like all of them because it's gonna take forever otherwise. I actually moved all of them by accident, whoops. I'm gonna do that. Move a bunch of them. Okay. So what happens when the dropper actually empties though, um, and the reason I have so many is so it gives me enough time to explain it, we can see that this comparator turns off for a split second. Then what happens is the item in this hopper goes into this hopper, it turns this comparator signal on, which turns on both our output, and it turns this torch off, which now allows this hopper to push all the items back into the dropper. Um, when the dropper is completed getting all of the items, um, it'll turn off this comparator which will then take this item and push it back into this hopper and then you're back to where you started again. Um, now the output's going to stay on for as long as this hopper is emptying, uh, which is a limitation which I'll show how to solve in a minute. Uh, but essentially it will allow you to use any amount of items that you want, um, but it doesn't come without limitations, of course. Uh, but that is how that works in case you need to modify it or do anything else with it. Now there are a few limitations to this design. Um, the first one is pretty easy to show. If I still have three items in here and then I go one, two, three, we can see that the output pulse turns on and then it turns back off. Now, if I increase the number of blocks in here, so I'm gonna make it a 10 pulse counter and then I do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. We can see the output pulse turns on, but it also stays on for a significantly longer period of time. Um, that's because it'll stay on for as long as it takes to uh, clear all the items out of this hopper. 
Um, and in that case, uh, it, it goes up with the number of items that you have in the dropper. Um, this is a pretty easy problem to solve. Um, if you want the output pulse to be a consistent length, what you can do instead is get rid of this repeater. Um, we have this redstone dust right here, and it needs to be on top of an opaque block, um, which is gold in this case. We put a sticky piston facing up, which is on the same level as the block the dust is on. Then we put an opaque block on top of the sticky piston, and then we put a repeater facing away from the block on top of the piston, and then we can put our uh, lamp. So now in this case, um, if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, it'll turn on and it'll turn off really quickly. Um, so that is completely independent of however many items we have in the dropper. Um, you saw that the piston went down a lot later than the output went off. Um, the piston going down is kind of an indication that your circuit is reset. Now, another limitation, um, and this one's a little bit harder to get around, is when you are, uh, when the output's on, so I'll do it again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, when this hopper needs to empty out, it will ignore all input signals that you put into it. Um, in fact, what will happen is the input signal will have the dropper put into the hopper, but because the hopper is clearing out into the dropper, it'll just clear out the item that it just got. Um, and put it back in the dropper. So it effectively ignores anything you put in. Um, so I'll demonstrate that. If I do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and I do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, um, if it didn't ignore me, I would expect the next one that I do to uh, power the output. If I do it, we can see that it doesn't happen. I mean, in fact, I have nine more, uh, and that's just because it ignored the first nine that I did. Um, this is a lot harder to get around. Um, a Band-Aid fix is if you have uh, an input pulse that's not too fast. Um, so if it's like really fast, then you might not be able to get around this. But if it's like not too fast, but it's just fast enough where it can't clear out all of your items, um, you can chain two of these pulse counters together um, where you have one and then you use this signal as the input to the next one. Um, and then you just copy and paste this thing over. Um, you can chain them together to reduce the amount of time it takes for your circuit to reset. So for example, if I have like 12, um, if 12 items clearing out of the hopper, um, clearing out of this hopper, is too long of, of a time to wait, uh, but four items clearing out of the hopper isn't, um, then what I can do is instead of making 12, I chain two together and I make one that's a pulse counter of three, and then the next one is a pulse counter of four. Um, so in that case, it will uh, it'll divide out a lot quicker. Um, for each individual one, but then the end result is still a pulse counter of 12. Um, so that might be a band-aid fix. Um, and that would probably get you most of the way there. Um, if you need it to be really, really fast, like if you have a, a clock that looks like this, or rather an input circuit that looks something like this, um, this might be a lot harder to get around. I mean, you might not be able to get around it with that method. All right, guys, that'll be it for this pretty short video. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any ideas or if you have any issues with it, and I'll do my best to help. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you next time.